Today we're reading John 14, verses 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus says, as he prepares his disciples for the next steps on the journey. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Like me, you might have heard that reading at a funeral. As we have said goodbye to someone that we love. Someone close to us, a family member, a friend. The reason why those words so rich bring comfort in a funeral is because they fulfil two purposes. They talk to us of where the person we are saying goodbye to has gone. If they have loved and followed Jesus, they are going with him to the Father. He is taking them with him. And it also speaks to where we are, that in the place where we are, God can bring us peace. There is a hope and a future. There is a way forward. One of the Hebrew words for hope is the word that is also used for rope. And people have commented on this image of, of hope being like a rope by which we pull the hope of the future into the present. It's something we can hang on to. Last Sunday in the sermon, we looked at how Jesus prepared the disciples' feet tenderly for the journey that was to come. And now he begins to prepare their hearts by telling them that he has prepared a place for them in the Father's house. In the crisis of the cross, in the pain of seeing their close friend nailed to a tree. There is a place, there is peace, there is a way on the other side, there is a hope on the other side. And Jesus says, you know the way to get there, it's me. The way to the Father is through knowing the Son. This is fullness of life. It's rich and it's beautiful hopeful verses that that resonate not just with Jesus and his disciples through this time of crisis but also with believers through the ages as we read those words at times of greatest darkness and struggle so how do the disciples respond to Jesus preparing them Judas is diabolical he has a plan to betray Jesus in league with the enemy of our souls. Peter disowns Jesus. He doesn't understand what he's about to do now, but the seeds of his downfall and his pride are already there. Thomas doubts. How can we know this? We see the same doubts here that we see later on after the resurrection. He's just not sure about this. Philip is disorientated. Where is the father? How can I see the father? When the son radiating the image of this God is just before him, his heart is orientated in the wrong direction. Jesus is tender with these disciples in all their states of confusion and misdirection. He says, trust in the signs, trust in what you've seen me doing and trust in my sonship. 
trust in the relationship I have with the Father and the way that I reveal God to you. And then as he shares about the journey that they're going on to, he speaks about the journey he will make to the Father. And he says that purpose and power come from his place with the Father. That actually when he is with the Father, we might mourn for him and long for him to be directly with us as was before. But actually in that place, he can hear our prayers, answer our prayers, change and transform things in our lives. It's astonishing that as Jesus is about to be surrendered and tried and arrested and, and ultimately hung out to die, he starts to speak of power and authority and, and greater things and the disciples doing more on the other side of this. But Jesus is saying to them in this moment of crisis, when I'm in the right place, when I've gone through what I have gone through and been lifted up, there will be power and purpose. And that's true in the lives of the disciples. If through this journey they can put Jesus in the right place, they can keep him in the right place. Not as an actor in their plot or an object of doubt or disrespect. But if they put him centre, follow his plans, his purposes, be with him on his journey that he needs to make. They receive power and purpose. They can be strengthened through this testing and they have the direction of where to go. And if we today put Jesus in his right place at the centre, if we orientate our lives Christward, if we measure our hearts against the light of Christ, we receive power and purpose. We receive the strength of the Holy Spirit at work in our hearts. As Jesus says, I will empower you. I will hear your prayers. And we receive direction and purpose, as Jesus says, just follow me. Whatever your plans are, follow me. I pray that God would give you strength and direction as you read these words of hope and comfort today.